Hello everybody. I want to post a video of our homemade sawmill just with some ideas. Uh, we did a lot of extensive research for a lot of years and YouTube was a huge help with that. So we thought maybe we could help some people. What works really well for us that we enjoy. Uh, maybe some changes that we would do. Um, but we'll just start with the sawmill itself. Uh, we can cut 21 feet, just just shy 21 feet. But so the bed itself is 24 feet long. If you can see, uh, we do have an axle for this that we can put on, and but we remove it when we're at our house here. You know where we have this. We take the axle off. We have posts in the ground, three feet by six we just slide it on so we in the front here we have a double receiver hitch then we'll put in a it's about a five foot bar with a tongue on it two by two and we will just slide it in with our skid steer with the ball in the fork this is makes it nice not have to go around the axle all the time it takes about 15 minutes to put the axle on not too bad if we take it out for mobile stuff it's all quarter wall two by six tubing and this is all quarter wall two by four cross members so one thing that was nice that we enjoy is the bed rails are quite a bit higher than the side rails so that we can easily set stuff on with forks and that helps out a lot so we started with two by twos we go right down with a t-nut uh, we still actually do use those from time to time. And you can see here we have oak 2x2s two that we use sometimes. And that's nice because then we don't have to worry about if we were to accidentally hit it when we're cutting low to the bed or resawing some stuff. But we have our adjustable size. Now these are aluminum, so that makes nice for rolling the log, plus it keeps the weight from being high. Uh, we have a spring tension here, um, compressed, and that keeps a load on that for up and down and gives us some adjustment. So if I just walk my way around the mill, um, we have 19 inch band wheels, and they are you know, typical what you would find on the internet. And you can see that we have their inch and a half shaft, bearing flange, uh, works nice around to our pulley. And then we have our set screws here for being able to adjust our tracking on this side. This is, uh, this four by four tube here is we use to put diesel fuel in. And in the winter time, sometimes we'll use diesel fuel for our lubricant. And when I get around the other side, I'll show you more how that, that works. But one thing that we did, and this, this took some adapting. So first shaft we put through and we had a bearing start to not so much go bad, but it's noticing some wobble. So when we made a new shaft going through here, so we, we made the shafts and everything, so we have a mill, but also a, a big lathe, so that lent itself quite a bit to helping with making this. But that shaft, in between those two bearings, inside here, we were able to get a good measurement, and we turned the shaft to where there, there is a bushing in there, and that bushing keeps, it, it doesn't push, but it keeps this bearing right here on the edge. So it keeps the edge of the bearing from running out of true because there are set screws on your bearing flange. And that set screw can have a tendency to off kilter your bearing a little bit, which what we found on our first shaft, it just ate the shaft away. Uh, 
a little bit. So we put a bushing in between there, and you can see I have this shimmed right here. It's a washer that we milled to the correct uh, thickness so that we're not putting a side load on the bearing flanges, but it keeps that bearing flange from wobbling. So it keeps them true, and that's been fabulous. The frame is very sturdy, which we feel is a very important feature. We opted for the 22 horsepower Predator motor, and I have to say that we've had no problems with it. It runs, it runs great. Uh, keep your air filter clean. We change the oil quite a bit. We're at 102 or so hours on this engine right now in the mill and it's been great i'll go with a close-up view here hopefully we can see i probably should have got a ladder but this chain coming let me go around the front this chain which here is our adjustment on the chain so we can make each side parallel up and down it runs up over top of it idler wheel but that idler wheel is connected to a shaft to this side and it goes over top of that chain <laughs> sprocket sorry and then under an idler wheel just keeps tension on that and then around those the back idler wheel and then back so that takes up the slack of the chain as it's going up and down but we have garage door springs on here, which was not our idea. We did see this on YouTube which on a very nice mill that was built. And those idlers or those springs off a garage door do a great job with picking up the weight of this mill. And we really enjoy that. But this steps down on our this wheel here. So I can rotate it this way, but it will not go down the other way because we have try to back up this brake so you you pull on this lever which slacks the v-belt and it will let it go down the which there are many cook sawmill many sawmills have that idea so we 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 really like it it works well but this chain goes up from a very small maybe 14 tooth sprocket 16 something like that up to around an 82 sprocket and then it also steps down again to a small sprocket up to a large sprocket again and that gets the gearing down to where it's very easy to raise and lower the head one thing that was an afterthought when we built this we always knew we wanted to make the mill electrified with uh, we've yet to do it with a motor to, for forward and reverse and chain drive and everything which we'll get to that but the uh, mill we thought well we'll just get this built try it work the bugs out of it and we'll just manually push the mill through you could but it, it, this is a very beefy unit and it's heavier which i'm glad that we built that way but it is heavy so we adapted this handle, which you can see, this is hard to film myself and do it, but we crank that handle. This cable comes from the back, under the idler wheel in the bottom, up and around that, and then out to the end of the mill. And I have to say that it works fabulous. It gives you a great feel of going through the log of your speed cutting it works fabulous we we really enjoy it but when you're reversing a lot that gets a little old so we still will electrify this someday one thing that's very important is if you can see the scale here so here's our the red line in the middle is what we're shooting for but on the right side that scale does not move on the left this does move so if i record this this is just on a magnet so i can move this up and down 
and it's just a piece of aluminum with magnet all up and down the back side. And that works great because you, you need to be able to move it. Um, say if you're cutting a, a log and you've got three sides squared up, you want to be able to, say you, you wanna cut all the way down to, you're cutting four quarter boards, okay? So I can set my four quarter, which is the blue line here, the far left, I can set four quarter, but I can go up to say inch and a half. So that would leave an inch and a half on my last board. So as I'm cutting and I get down to around the pith area, and I then flip the cant over, then I can readjust this down to one inch so that my last board will be a one inch board. And my first cut that I take off the top of the cant then would be half inch, three eighths, whatever. And that just is scrap then. But what happens is most of your logs you're cutting, you get towards the pith, you start getting a bow in the cant. So that eliminates that. When you flip it and you just move it a little. So being able to move that, it's hard to explain on video without actually doing. But uh, as you're cutting, you find that it's you have to have a scale that moves. So we just have it laid out. We made this one. It's four quarter, six quarter, eight quarter. Uh, we even have some marks on there for three and a half. So like if we're cutting actual true two by fours or something. This took the most part figuring out with the mill. So this here is, if you can see the springs in here and get to this side, my hand in the way, sorry. You get to this side, you can see these springs. Those are 800 pound springs and there are two of them. And then on this side, you can see the two rods. We adapted this hydraulic jack. It's just a small, like four ton hydraulic jack. We were drilled it out right here and we added a gauge so that we could always tell what pressure we're tightening to. And we tightened to 2,500 PSI. Um, and we try to stay right around that so that our tracking stays true. Because if you don't have enough pressure on it, your wheels are not under load as much, the blade could walk off. And if you tighten too much pressure, then you're, you're over tensioning your band and wearing it out faster. But we just have a bar here that we stick in and a couple turns here and we, it moves the head and tensions that up. And it keeps a load on those springs backed up which I think is just a great feature to have when you're cutting. So having the springs there constantly keeps the same tension on the blade. That pressure gauge never moves when we tighten it. So the blade will heat up and cool off and heat up and cool off as you're using it. And that blade never changing the consistent pressure is very important, I think, because it gives you very true consistent cuts. We the, One thing with making this that I've been very surprised with is that I can't believe how accurate this mill cuts. I thought that I was gonna have a lot of bugs to work out. Even though I did a lot of research, I, I just thought there was gonna be a lot of things to fix. and there, there really hasn't been. Now, there are a lot of things that I would change if I was to build a... Well, not a lot. There are things I would change if I were to build another one. Um, this is our... This is our engagement handle. So, this right here engages the clutch on the other side. As well as... So, when it, it pulls, it's pulling tension on this rod which is going over and also pulling tension on our idler pulley. But it's also at the same time hooked up back here and it is idling the saw up. So all in one stroke, you, you're getting your tension and your uh, everything, it fires up all in the same time. And that's great. That, not that it's the best way to do it, but it, it, we like it. It works out good. 
This bar here is under a pretty tight load so it doesn't move when the saw's going because it has there's tension on the blade down lower than the bottom of your wheel. And so if you can see close here, we these are V-block bearings and that works out really well. But then underneath, just kind of a simple thing. So we started with making cam bolts and it's more complicated. So we just have a nut welded here and a bolt going up and that keeps tension up on those bearings, the axle of the bearing, which keeps this nice and tight. So it's just easy to just grab, just push it out, pull it back. You don't really move it as much as what you think when you're sawing, but off the back, the four by four tube, you can see our valve there. That's for our diesel fuel. This goes down to a, a wick that we have there built in and it just drips every now and then uh, once a second maybe just keeps that wick wet and that keeps the blade nice and clean it works well but we do run rubber wheels so although i don't notice a huge change but i i am about due to probably change the rubber wheels um but it's been a year and it really hasn't eaten the rubber away so i don't know i mean they say yes you but again we're not putting that much diesel on it but we also so you can see here where that just drips into a piece of felt in that metal box that we have made and that felt wipes the blade as it goes around and then on this side though we have our water drip so that water drips on there and that's what we use most of the time is water with pine saw works great uh or just a little bit of soap soapy water keeps the pitch off of it very well um and then what what else uh, i really i can't say enough about this predator engine uh it has plenty of horsepower we're running an 047 171 inch blade which is a standard size from Woodmiser. Woodmiser blades are fabulous. Um, yes, there are a lot of other blades out there. Tried some, but I really appreciate the Woodmiser blades. They, they get them to me in a day. The It's an inch and a quarter, 171 inch, 047 thickness, seven degree. This is a 747 blade. And the seven degree blades work great. Um, I do have some nine degree blades, you know, they cut nice too. They, they do make a little bit smoother of a finish. The seven degree blades are, they're just, they work great for us. I'm not going to say they're the best, but I will say that they work very well for us. I'm trying to think of what some other details. So if you can see the lug there, that's where we put a jack on. So we have eight jacks to put on this when we take it out for mobile sawing this is our it, this was kind of a fast and dirty we wanted to add more of these but it it just works well so there's really not been a huge need to upgrade yet this slides back and forth on the tube one thing i would say like i say this was fast and dirty i want to make this with a heavier wall because this is has become a little egg shaped and it's a little harder to slide so but this is our cam action so you push this lever down you can see the, the cam action on that it will tighten up and these little teeth on here work great when you've got you're down and you lock that on to your last one inch board uh, it holds really well and we've got a flat spot welded on the back of, or not welded we've got a flat spot milled on the back of our cam so that when we push this down and it goes from here to there it's on a flat spot and that will not vibrate loose so it goes down and locks on and it stays um we we started with our first one it had a up here on this head this bar was original but this head up here we had a you know a threaded t-rod t 
teeth on an all thread and and that worked great it did but this this works better this in my opinion it works it works fabulous I'm trying to think of what else might be something of importance to share with some people if they have any ideas by all means just ask in the comment if there's something that i missed and i would be happy to answer any questions and show pictures or whatever it may be but uh, it does really well one thing that i couldn't stress enough that i see in a lot of videos is the bucket so you see here where we're we're working you see how clean this is now we haven't scooped this up we haven't i mean there's definitely a bunch of sawdust on the ground but our sawdust goes to a horse farm by us and that helps us immensely so we have bags that we put in a rack and every few cuts we just take the bag off and dump it in the bag hang the bucket back up if i'm cutting by myself well you can see a bunch of buckets here if i'm cutting by myself i just walk around and set the bucket on the ground throw another bucket on it real quick and then when i've got five six buckets filled up i'll shut the saw off dump them all out i'm good to go again this right here in my opinion, is a huge time saver in the end of having to clean sawdust up off the ground. Uh, not only that, when we're sawing, it keeps from so much airborne sawdust in the air. So it's going right in the saw, and then it doesn't really blow out of the bucket, and it just cuts down on a lot of airborne sawdust. That, that's a big thing. The flitches that come off, you can see what we have built here too, that this cart, carriage, whatever you want to call it, uh, these are all 16 inch apart, two by fours, and they're put into a U. So they're built into a U. We just throw our flitches in there and then we can come right down with the chainsaw and just individually cut each one and there we go, we have firewood. We burn a lot of firewood, so either we give it away or whatever it may be, but it just gives us, this is quick. And we cut it right here, throw it into a pallet, and off it goes. Um, I'm not gonna say that's the fastest way, but it, in the end, it's cleaner. So it does save in the end. One thing that we really enjoy, maybe I can unplug the light here. It's, okay, so, this uh we built a roof over this this is just this is just temporary right now um took us a couple days just put some flat steel up on top of this and just to get the saw under out of the weather but this is just temporary for us right now which is it'd be hard to tear it down but <laughs> uh we did have an i-beam that we put up here and we have a chain fall from it man that's just the chain fall is great because it comes right over here. We have log tongs for loading small logs if be, need be. We also have this chain here that we made with the hook on the end of it. And someday we'll show a video of this in operation. But that chain, so when we're on the mill here, that chain can go down and under and around and hook up on the log. And as we lift, well, it would be going around this way and then hooking up. As we lift, it just rotates, flips the log right to where we want it. And when you have really big logs, you know, that's a huge thing. The, our mill, we can cut maximum width 37 and a half inches. And that's pretty wide. So sometimes you've got a pretty large log on here. And there's no way you're turning that with a can't hook unless you got three guys. And still with that, you just, compared to this, is you just can't hook. <laughs> so another thing that we do a lot here, we've got a little bit of a mess going on, but so you see these saw horses here that we've built. Uh, that was just another quick thing. These saw horses we would put right here about four feet from the saw. And we have four by fours to sit in that notch 
and then they go right over to the bed. And we can load these saw horses up, eight foot long. We can load those up with however many logs. They'll hold a lot, eight logs, six, whatever, you, whatever you're doing. Say you're cutting a bunch of the same log and you just, real quick, just roll them right from the saw horse right onto the sawmill, and that's great. Otherwise, we'll use the skid steer to take the log off of the mill. Well, we load them, but say you needed to flip the log and it was large. We can also go up underneath the skid steer, back up, roll the log, pick it up, set it back on the mill. That works pretty well too. I can't think of anything else right now that might be of a good idea to show people, but I think that we'll end this video now. Uh, hopefully some people can get some ideas off of this and good luck with your project if that's what you're doing, making a mill. I, I can't express enough of how much we enjoy this. This is just a hobby for us, um, but it's a fun one. It's amazing to open up a log and see what's inside. It's just exciting. I mean, here we're cutting some more, we're gonna make some more pallets and we got a bunch of maples, but you know, you just look inside of that and look at that spalted maple. It's just this beautiful stuff, you know? I mean, we're, we're woodworkers, so you know, all this stuff we'll use for ourselves, but uh, yeah, it's just really, really neat. Really, really neat stuff to open a log up and see a beautiful stuff. And then when something gets made out of your own lumber that you milled, dried, and then turned it into something, it's very gratifying. And I know there's a lot of guys out there doing that, and it it's neat to see. So we, we wanted to add our ideas of YouTube onto YouTube of this. So if anybody has any questions, please just send me a comment, you know, and we'll try to answer it. I'm sure that there's a lot of things on here that I've missed. And, but I hope that perhaps this video gives enough footage as to what we did on this mill. One thing that I definitely will be changing soon was this is a 14 inch pulley, which is the, the gearing is perfect from a four inch pulley on the engine to a 14 inch pulley, drive pulley, 19 inch band wheels. We run the engine around 3,500 RPMs and that's getting us somewhere. I, I forget, I did all the math of, to figure this out, but it gets us somewhere around 4,500 feet per second. 4,500 feet per minute. It have to be per minute with the with the blade. Uh, Cook Sawmill has a lot of wonderful videos that explains that. I mean, what nice guys to put that on YouTube for people to learn. Uh, helped me out immensely, obviously. But one thing I definitely will be doing is this is just a single V belt. Works great. Uh, it doesn't slip. It doesn't bother us too much but i i definitely want to get it to a double banded v belt with a double pulley sheave um i just think that i'm getting a better transmission of power from the engine to the drive shaft there but these belts on these wheels are b57s and that's a 57 inch inside circumference V belt, 60 inch on the outside circumference, but the B is a 5 8 belt, and you can, they came with B56 belts, which were just impossible to get on, get on, they, they weren't impossible, they were hard to get on, the 57s, you can remove them easier, and clean underneath them, and replace them easier, whatever, the 57s work great. And that's kind of the common size on a lot of mills. A lot of guys will say 56 is, works perfect, 57, but we run the 57 inch belt and it works fine. Uh, no, no matter what, you'll get a slack on this side as it's under load and up to speed. And it just doesn't, it just doesn't affect anything. So this belt has, you know, a little bit of a crown to it, which helps track the, the blade on there. and. 
it's unbelievable when you get it set how well that blade will stay on your wheels. Now, you have to have a tension. Uh, it's hard to show a video here, but you have to have a tension this way a little bit because as you tighten those blades, which are a lot of PSI, it's essentially pulling this way. I'm exaggerating, but it's putting a tension on. So that's where I was saying that keeping running this similar tension all the time is keeps your blade tensioned, uh, keeps your blade tracking rather to the, the same appropriate distance. And we run about an eighth of an inch off the back of this flange right here, which is recommended. Um, these are about a quarter of an inch to three eighths lower in the bottom of the wheel, if I can remember. Um, but staying off the back of this flange helps from wearing out the back. As you get cutting, this blade, this blade will go back some anyway. So you keep it off some so that uh, it's not constantly rubbing on that flange and prematurely wearing it out. And definitely on the back of your blade would create heat, which could create um, cracking and all sorts of things. But so that's one little tip. But. All right, well, I thank everybody. Uh, if they watch the video, maybe just, you know, leave me a comment and like it if you think that it had good information. And if you have any questions, let me know. This is probably one of the biggest things that I, uh, I, I stress a lot is I just love the bucket. It just really works out great. All right, everybody, have a good day. Thank you.